got to Gardenville that we had what we called our official rollout. And the girl on the left there is going to try to break the champagne. The second try, she makes it. And we're ready for the big moment. Those two landing gear legs have been put on after the nose got out the door because they're much too wide for the door. We managed to get it out, but uh, unable, we were unable to start the engine. And so ignominiously, it had to be towed back by my car into the uh, garage. You can see we had pretty good winters in Buffalo even back then. This is December 18th, just over a year after we got to Bell and six months after this project in the garage was starting. Now here's a, a later rollout. And we've learned the drill of how to put the legs on much better at this point. The garage is still a Chrysler agency. Uh, it was restored to its original purpose after the Gardenville project was finished. The Gardenville project lasted exactly three years from June of 1942 to June of 1945. The agreement that Arthur had with Larry Bell was to uh, make a one-place helicopter to demonstrate the principles, and then later to make a two-place helicopter so Larry himself could get a ride. Uh, details of the landing gear are rather amusing here. You notice the black tube at the bottom there is a tension member, and then outboard there is shock cord so that we get a resilient effect. You can see the fuselage is hardly completed, there is a wooden bench for the pilot operator to sit on. And uh, the object here, of course, was just to get the engine uh, running with the rotor and make sure we had a compatible mechanism without large oscillations. That's just the dolly that wheels, we wheeled it in and out on. And uh, there's a pretty good view of the test bed uh, in the configuration where we got the first mechanical problems solved. That shows how the rotor is free to move in a seesaw direction. Uh, here's our auxiliary power cart, the mighty APU, consisting of two batteries in series. And by this means, we managed to give the uh, rotor engine enough of a kick to start. Now, we had no clutch at this point, but uh, we could rotate the rotor ahead of time on the free wheeling, which we did so that there was possibility that the poor engine could get started without all the inertia of the rotor. Nobody in the cockpit, you notice, uh, not exactly recommended these days, but uh, you can see uh, that we're trying to uh, work on getting the mechanism to run properly. We had a lot of trouble with the carburetor and torsional oscillations at first. Now here Arthur Young's trying his own helicopter, uh, sitting in the uh, on that bench and uh, testing out the controls to see if their sensitivity is about right and so forth. We're holding him by ropes, but again attached above the center of gravity to prevent him from sliding and slithering around too much. But uh, he wanted to see, of course, right away whether we had about the right uh, power, right uh, uh, control sensitivity and so forth. Now that's just to illustrate the amount of wind in this case, because our first problem immediately encountered was uh, very severe vibrations whenever he was hovering in a breeze of about 20 knots or so. We always said he flew about three feet up here, but he never quite got that fourth foot off the ground. About this time, we had our first setback. We had a visit from a Bell executive who was a pilot who felt that he should be the one to make the first flight. And so, uh, he came to join us one day near New Year's uh, of 43. And here he is without his safety belt fastened, and he's holding on by means of the controls. Now watch very closely, because we're going to have our first uh, bad uh, episode here. He's thrown up through the rotor. He landed in a snowbank to the left there, and fortunately his injuries were limited to a broken left arm just above the wrist. In fact, in a matter of only days, he was able to go about his uh, business. But uh, 
we were set back considerably and took us a little while to rebuild our test bed. Here it is rebuilt. Notice that the engine is uh, flexibly mounted in the pylon there and that it's a vertical installation very similar to where the electric motors for the models had been, right in the center with the shaft vertical, which was part of our development problem I referred to earlier. This shows a little bit later in spring, and Arthur Young will show the throttle in his right hand as he twists it, and the uh, lever in his left hand is known as the pump handle collective. We'll explain more about that later. Now here he is running a test in the yard, and he is uh, showing, uh, he's tethered to the ground in the first place here, and I think you can see to the left of the machine along the fence there uh, a cable. That cable is holding the machine. We do not have the beautiful shiny tail boom anymore here because, of course, we lost it in the wreck. Uh, 